Hello again YouTube, Mad Dog here. Welcome back to my channel. So on this video, we're gonna be taking a look around this and inside of this little bag, we've got the cheapest available currently eBay folding twig stove. Stay tuned. Welcome back. So as stated, I've gone ahead and bought a cheap folding wood stove wood burning stove from ebay and as far as i can find this is currently the cheapest one that you can find on ebay so it comes in this nylon bag with zipper and carry handles so a nice little package i'm going to open it up and take a look okay so That to one side so in here we've got a small griddle small um, meat rack there a stainless steel ash tray or ember catcher coal tray and the stove itself so as you can see this thing folds relatively flat and compact but it's covered in this horrible blue protective film. So I'm gonna bring you back down to the bench and we'll have a closer look at what we actually get. And we'll open this out and see how it uh, comes together. Stay with me. Okay, so the stove itself, nice compact little thing. And it simply opens out concertina style there. And inside of there, you'll notice a griddle which I'm about to fold down or flop down hopefully just there which becomes the base of your fire so the coals and your firewood will sit on there and inside of which there are two small retaining brackets right down in the bottom you can just see there if I just excuse me just there and there are the hinges and on the opposing sides the two little hooks that that press into and that makes it a nice rigid platform then and at the front of this stove there is a little door and that is where you would feed your your firewood your uh, tinder and firewood um, it stays open so that you can then continuously feed your fire we have a top griddle wire mesh griddle there which sits on the top of the stove with two small carry handles so you can lift this on and off quite easily for cooking your meat on or resting your pot on top of and we also have supplied this small tray which slots through the side at the bottom which is a basically an ember or ash or coal catcher we've yet to try all this out i've got my initial doubts about that but we'll cover that later on in this video Okay, so now we've got our stove set up and it's all squared away nicely and it's ready for firing. Obviously, before we can do so, if you choose to, this is, it's covered in this horrible blue plastic protective film, which, as we all know, is a pain in the ass to, to remove. A little tip or trick here from Mad Dog is get yourself your hot air gun or if you've got a real powerful hair dryer and go ahead and warm the areas up initially and it will help this blue protective film come away more easily if that makes sense just warm it up slightly and it'll be less of a job so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to crack on and start removing all this blue film as best as i can some of it will have to come off during the burning process um, this may take me some time so when i've done that i'll get back to you stay tuned Welcome back. So I've gone ahead and removed all the blue protective film. To be honest, it did take me a lot longer than I expected. Um, so before I go up the yard and actually use this thing, I'm just going to throw a few specs out here, which I've got written down over there. Um, so the height of this thing is 21 centimetres or eight and a quarter inches. And its depth is 14 centimetres or five and a half inches. As is the width. That's the same. Its weight is 
1.1 kilograms, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> or 2.2, uh, 2.3 pounds, or 35.6 <clears throat> ounces. <laughs> so it's quite a heavy thing, and that is the total weight of when it's folded down in the bag with the griddle and the um, coal pan. Um, its price is £13.50 over here in the UK. That's delivered from a UK supplier. I dare say it is made in China. It is made of stainless steel. Do excuse me, my uh, my moustache is um, encroaching into my eyes. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the front door, the loading door, into which you will fill your fuel, um, has a nice little retaining latch here so you can close your your shuttle your door and it stays closed so without further ado and further humor i'm going to take this up into the yard um, just simply get a brew on fire it up give my likes and dislikes about this thing and um, we'll give it a run for its money see what you all think stay tuned Okay, so as you can see, we're up the yard. I've got a few fat wood shavings in the doorway of the stove. A bit of kindling and some fuel there. And uh, let's get this bad boy cracked up. I'm just gonna get a brew on tonight, so I'm not going to be doing anything dead exciting or any cooking on this, because I'm sure once it's proven, you know, we'll, we'll get the idea. It's a smoking. I've just got some small kindling sticks here. Hopefully get this going. So once the fire's got a hold in this little stove, I'll bring you all back and uh, show you how it performs. We're just going to boil a bit of water up tonight, just have a brew. And then we're going to have a wash up session as it were in the shed, give it some pros and cons, let you know my thoughts and opinions for what it's worth. <laughs> and uh, we'll leave it to that. Stay with me. So just off the bat, the stove seems to be burning the fuel very efficiently. Whilst that's a good thing, in my opinion, it also means that it absolutely eats fuel. So if you are going to do some cooking over this little little uh, folding stove, I would suggest doing plenty of prep work and getting plenty of fuel to hand before we start cooking. Right, I'll get back to you in a few minutes when uh, when the brew is done.
Well, the stove has performed faultlessly, as you can see. The only things really that I would comment on at the moment. Um, obviously, I want to allow it to cool and see if it all still folds down properly with no issues, not too much um, distortion. The only criticism that I would have off the bat are two things really. The first thing being the size of the mesh inside the coal pan. It's quite a big wide coal pan square which means your initial small tinder like your fat wood shavings just fall straight through. So I'd recommend saving a piece of disposable barbecue um, griddle you know with a fine mesh and cut it to size and drop that in there as well just to give you a, a better coal retention you might say for smaller finer stuff and that leads me on to the second criticism which would be the coal pan tray in my opinion it's too small it doesn't cover the entire footprint of this stove and if I'm cooking something on this I've literally just done a, a cup of coffee, as you can see. Uh, so I've used minimal fuel, really. But if I was to use this as a cook stove and do something a bit more um, in depth, you might say, um, where I'm burning this stove for a lot longer, therefore using a lot more fuel, the, that coal pan's just gonna fill straight away. It's not ideal for, it's, it's emptying, basically. So what I would suggest is getting a biscuit tin lid or a cook an extra cook pot to put your stove in or on um, it'd just be a bigger footprint it'd help protect the ground from scorching more effectively more efficiently smoke always blows right at you doesn't it as soon as the camera's on <laughs> and um, for me that's that's the two main criticisms the third one is obviously the bag i don't like the nylon bags even though it is well made and it is good for what it is you know we're talking a 13 pound stove here so yeah, I'm gonna let it burn out. We'll uh, let it cool. We'll take a look at it again in the garage just to wash up. And, uh, let my brew cool a little ways. It's actually a bit too hot at the moment. Oh yeah, just. <laughs> so, yeah, stay with me and uh, we'll have a, a closing look. So as you can see, we're back in the garage. The stove's cooled down sufficiently for us to have a a look around this little fella so as i was saying um, during the uh, brew the coal tray is one of the negatives for me i think i'm going to get some finer mesh material and cut it to size to put in there with my kit so the small fine tinder doesn't drop straight through immediately so smaller diameter mesh i'd recommend that and also as you can probably see, I've got the whole assembly on a biscuit tin lid, which I think would be a better um, solution to the ember catching tray. Um, if you do want to leave no trace and not scorch the ground as much, then the tray that they provide, what I found was after the fire had burnt out, because of the design of this, as soon as you open that tray, it guillotines all the ash straight off onto the floor so that tray really needed to be lower down so you can take the ash out on the tray and discard it or bury it or bag it and take it home whatever you're going to do with it for me that's a bit of a fail so i would suggest leaving that at home and pack either a biscuit tin lid or a bigger cook vessel or something that you can stand your stove directly onto that way you're definitely going to catch all your embers and coals and ashes that's just my opinion that's what i'll be doing with mine especially if i'm in a piece of woodland or uh, an area where i don't want to create a big footprint of um, scorch so that being said my only other gripe is the bag i don't like nylon bags um, but you do get a bag and um, something's always better than nothing so what i'm going to do now is just take the griddle off close the door which still shuts nicely and we're going to push the little rack inside up if it will so that's gone quite tight but it has distorted a little ways but it still operates 
and the hinges have got tight but it does still close and I dare say with a little bit of copper slip or you know some high temperature um, anti-seize type of lubricant would help that but I dare say once it's been used a few times that will all loosen up and bed in nicely so for me it's not a big issue so it all folds back down nice and flat and obviously we can go ahead and stow it away now in our little bag keeping the rest of your kit clean and tidy not covering everything in ash and soot and um, that's it job done so on to the next adventure would i recommend this little stove well it's the first time i've used it so it's more of an overview than a review um, up to now it looks good especially for the price you know 13 pounds 50 why not stainless steel happy days um i don't think personally you're going to go far wrong with that i like it up to now uh, another downside maybe for some people could be the weight um one kilo 2.2 just over pounds 2.3 pounds in weight it depends what you're doing um it's definitely not one for these people that go ultra light hiking and camping it's too heavy for that but uh for us bushcrafters or campers why not you know I'd, I'd, I'd recommend it anyways up to now i think it's performed well i will use it up in the woods and i will give it plenty of dirt time if i do find anything that's untoward with this stove as i go along i will report back to you guys and lasses but um if you're interested in getting one of these they're available on ebay and like i say about 13 pounds 50 cheap and cheerful gets you underway and uh, yeah nice little addition so that's it for me for now i've rambled on way too long but i hope you find some of these little videos useful especially before you make a purchase that's why i do these little videos really um potentially hopefully saving you guys and lasses some of your hard-earned money if the product isn't any good but in this case i'd run with it that's okay so for now i'm going to sign off leave you all in peace until next time which won't be long thank you all very much for your views your support and um, until next time mad dog signing off yeah